I've set up the internal gear trains in the transmission to try and show a little bit of how this works. Sometimes the how transmissions function is a bit of a mystery. This is the input shaft and this is the part that we lubricate frequently that connects into the clutch. So this shaft is spinning when the engine's running. And it has a helical gear right here and a shock absorbing function so that if there's a sudden mismatch of speed between the engine and the transmission, this torsional spring will take up that shock and not cause it to run into the gear train, which of course could break teeth on the gears. <clears throat> now normally it's together like this, but I'm going to slide it over so I can show some of the other details. So this helical gear connects to another helical gear on what's called the intermediate shaft and that helical gear also connects to the fifth gear on this which is the output shaft. So when the engine's running this shaft is spinning and this gear on the intermediate shaft is fixed to the shaft. So when the input is spinning, this intermediate shaft is spinning. And the other thing you want to note is that this is a gear that's fixed to the splines on the shaft, but this gear is free to spin. It doesn't spin with the shaft. This gear, which is part of the gear shifting function, is pinned to the shaft. So it's spinning when the shaft spins, and this gear does not spin, and then this gear spins when the shaft is spinning. So what's happening is you have a fixed, free, fixed, free, fixed set of gears on the shaft. They meet on the output shaft with a set of gears. If this gear is fixed, this gear will be free. And if this gear is free, this gear is fixed. So they alternate fixed and free across the two shafts. Then, in order to get the gears to work, these are shift dogs that can move up and down. And there's one more here. Now, I'll show that maybe better with the intermediate shaft, but the design is there's a square uh, notch here, well not a notch, but a cutout, and it meets into the back of this gear here into a similar cut hole. So when this slides up, this is the free gear, this is the fixed gear moving with the shaft. When it slides up, this free gear isn't free anymore. It's going to spin with the intermediate shaft. And when it slides back out, this gear isn't spinning with the intermediate shaft anymore. So this gives the method of selecting gears. The dog gears move up and down to engage with the free gears and that locks them onto whatever shaft that dog is on so that it is actually spinning with the shaft. Now let's take a look at this a little closer. This is first gear on the output shaft, fourth gear on the output shaft, second gear, third gear, and fifth gear. And what you'll notice is first gear is a very big gear in diameter, fifth gear is the smallest gear in diameter. It's the mating of these gears and the sizes of their diameters that causes the difference in output shaft speed to input shaft speed. Correspondingly then, the engine can run very fast, so this is rotating a lot, but because of the small gear to big gear on first, this whole shaft spins at a lower RPM than the input. And it's that 
matching of different gear diameters as you work through one through five that changes the speed of the output shaft relative to the input shaft. And that's what the dog gears are doing. They're engaging a gear on this shaft, for example, which would normally be free. And that's first gear. So when you push down into first, you actually slide this dog gear down and it engages what was a free gear, first gear, locks it onto the output shaft, and that first gear is meshing with this gear on the intermediate, which you can see as I'm spinning it, is a fixed gear. So now, what's happened? This is spinning, the helical gears are connected, so the output shaft is spinning, because these are two fixed gears. And this is fixed to the shaft, so it's spinning. And now, with the dog gear engaged, first gear is fixed to the output shaft. So the power comes in, across, down, and into the output shaft. And you have first gear. When you shift up to second gear, the dog here moves up and it pins, a little hard to get it to work at the moment, it pins this gear and so now what you've got is second gear is running and therefore you've got second gear selected for the output shaft. It works its way through each of these shift dogs in order to engage one through five. Now when you're in neutral, these dogs will sit in between the two gears. This dog on the intermediate shaft will sit in between and engage neither of the, of the uh, free to spin gears and this one will engage neither on the output shaft. Consequently, there's power coming in through the input going into the intermediate, but there are no fixed-to-fixed -fixed connections between the intermediate and the output, so this shaft doesn't spin anymore, and you're in neutral. So that's a somewhat simplified description of how the transmission gearing works when you select gears.